Are you guys as pumped as I am for season two? Well, you're always happy no matter what. Do you ever have a bad day? You're just happy because Cabbage Bro's gone. Let's have a moment of silence for Cabbage Bro. Okay, that's enough. Six months ago, Avatar Korra Six defeated months, the Mon right. and the Equalists. Then the council was disbanded, and the United Republic elected its first president. Wow. Since brother, Commander Boomy, retired and moved to Air Temple Island. Okay. And Korra and her boyfriend, Mako, have been the talk of the town. Cool, alright. So, we went from council to elected president. That's probably going to factor heavily. I also like how we got a Boomy update, even though we've known him for two seconds. Better keep your eyes peeled, laddie. Never know what creatures lurk in the murky depths. <gasps> yeah, lean all the way over. Man overboard! Man overboard! Boat overboard. Book two, spirits, chapter one, rebel spirit. Did you become a police officer? I know that this has been said a lot, and I'll probably say it again many times, but whatever you want to say about Korra, there's no denying that the action is top-notch. I can't explain exactly why it is. Something about the way they animate it, it always feels like exciting. Looks like you had some car trouble. Good thing the police are here. <laughs> All right. Mako, the police officer. I can see it. I think these planes are finally ready to ship. doing cool stuff. Nothing has changed. the elephant rhino in the room, but since your father was thrown in prison, no company will work with us. I'm going to the South Pole to meet with someone who can help us put future industries back on top. Sami is like girl Batman. I just watched the last episode a couple days ago, but I literally feel like it's been six months and I missed them. <laughs> that is an abuse of the Avatar State, for sure. No fair! You gotta you let the kids win. The yeah. You did what? Clearly, you need more training to grasp the depths of your spiritual connections. Mm hmm. Punch, punch, punch! See? Mastered. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, is it too late for you to unretire from the United Forces? I already know I'm gonna like Boomy. It's pretty clutch they added him last minute there in the final season. For Korra, she hasn't lost that impulsive spirit. She's still headstrong. She still values power very highly and that creates a danger for her. It seems like she still hasn't learned her lesson. And I will say one thing I wasn't totally satisfied with about the end of season one was that she hit rock bottom and then Aang gave her her powers back. But I think what was missing from that whole thing, um, because it happened very quickly, was her reflecting on value outside of being powerful and being the avatar. So she's still like power and technique over like feeling and spirit. Hopefully our visit to all of the air temples will give you the inspiration you need to delve more deeply into your studies. Cool, can travel would be great. Aang was born? How many lemurs can I have? I want to get tattoos! What a question. But instead of arrows, I want lightning bolts. That doesn't make any sense. You don't make any sense! Fight! 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 No one's fighting! We're going to have a wonderful time! Now Are we going to have a world road trip with the kids? I'm not needed on the council. I can finally relax with my family and give Korra the attention she needs. I like that touch from Tenzin because it always seemed like he was a reluctant leader. So it makes sense that he'd actually be like relieved that he lost his position. Maybe I'll tag along just to see vacation Tenzin. You're not invited. He's going though. He's going. <laughs> yep, there's vacation Tenzin. And you can't stop me from vacation going to the Tenzin. festival. The best Tenzin. That's cute. I love Tenzin so much. You know what just occurred to me about him? He sometimes seems highly anxious about things, especially change. I think that is a trait you see in people who are really empathetic or introspective as kids and see trouble in their environment when they're young and take it on themselves that they have to be the ones to keep things together. People who are highly empathetic when they're young, they somehow develop this idea that they're responsible for their environment from a very young age. That's a gift and a curse because it sharpens your feelings of responsibility and your compassion, but also you end up taking on burdens that are not yours. And I feel like Tenzin has that a little bit. I don't know if that's intentional. It's just like what I'm thinking about while watching it. The limiter for him here is he can't even enjoy it. Like he's about to go on vacation and his kids are having a great time, but all he can think of is like, I gotta keep everything safe. I gotta keep everything stable and steady. And it's very important for people like that to keep like 
reminding themselves to have perspective that things aren't gonna fall apart if I let go for a second. It's good to keep your eyes open, it's good to be compassionate, it's good to think about the well-being of others, but also it's important to know when to let go a little bit and have fun. Interestingly, Katara also had similar traits, and she's his mother. And for Katara, it makes perfect sense because her world did fall apart and she was responsible for everything, you know? So that made her have to be like really attentive and sometimes over attentive towards things. Wow, I just gained like a whole new sympathy for Katara. Maybe I was too hard on her before. <laughs> so I walk up and say, looks like you had some car trouble. Good thing the police are here. <laughs> Did you write that beforehand? <laughs> yeah. Damn, it just got so much less cool now that he told that joke. Looks like you guys should put more try in triad. Huh? Or it's when you good. get to jail, tell them Mako sent you. Ooh, I like that one. Uh, that's kind of old. Okay. Sorry, abstract idea alert. This is a real thing. You do something cool in life and no one's around to see it and you're like, what good was it? There's something about having an observer that gives new life and feeling to our actions. This is why you can watch a movie and see a character like brooding angstily and you're like, oh, he's so cool. But if it's you in real life and you're brooding, it's just sad because <laughs> you're just you in a room and no one's, no one cares, like no one's seeing you brood. And a mistake people make, especially when they're young, is trying to emulate these characters they see in, in TV. But the coolness isn't their actions, the coolness is the fact that you're watching them. Like you instantly give someone power when you're viewing them. It's a kind of magic that I haven't quite figured out yet. They might be hardwired into us to follow certain signals. We can't always identify value for ourselves. So instead, a substitute for that is looking at what other people value and following. It's a, it's a kind of a short, shortcut and that can be abused, right? People can play on that and get attention and that attention will serve as a substitute for actual value. Bringing it back to Avatar, <laughs> how, how do I save this? Mako had this awesome moment that nobody saw. So he has to tell Korra, which makes it not cool, but he was already cool to us because we saw it. Does that make sense? Let's move on. It's like Tenzin's totally forgotten how I beat Amon. Tenzin's just trying to help you become the best Avatar you can be. Of course you take his side. I'm not taking his side. That was an extreme Just, reaction. I'm gonna take a walk. Why is it so much easier to bust triads than it is to get through one conversation with my girlfriend? It requires a delicate touch. You remember Mako? Sir? I hope you're not getting my daughter into any more trouble up in the city. Uh, uh no, uh... Water tribe men are so cool. Look at cool. all these people that came out to greet us. Uh, no, they came to greet them. The great chief of the Northern Water Tribe comes to grace us with his presence. Sad but true, like, when things were peaceful, it's easy to have petty squabbles. The Northern and Southern Tribes weren't enemies, as far as I know, when Ozai was in charge. But now that there's peace, suddenly there's a rivalry. It's almost like we need conflict. Whoa! Mm. Interesting design. Ladies. That's Eska and Desna, the chief's children. Desna is a guy. Oh no, sure, I knew that. Me too, oh, I knew that. Which one is Desna? <laughs> yeah, I'd also like to know, out of curiosity. This festival used to be a solemn time of fasting and meditation. Traditions change. It's not the end of the world. Tell that to the sailors who are being attacked by angry spirits in southern waters. I wouldn't mind learning about fighting spirits. Airbending is getting pretty boring. It's not very nice. Little diversity of teaching never hurt. But you don't want to disrespect your master though, I get that. So about the, the guy, I missed his name. This is a very, very common theme in the show. The idea of like tradition versus innovation. I actually really like what he said. That's a very insightful thing about how traditions are there for a reason. I think that's easy to forget. For everybody living in the present, we feel like we're on the cutting edge and therefore somehow have like some kind of divine insight into the world that other people lacked. But in a way, I think the fundamentals of our humanity are, are mostly unchanged, you know, since like the, the dawn of man. So I think like having one foot in that knowledge and remembering that institutions served a function and have allowed us to get to this point, you know, to, to get to where we are without treating it as like a dogma that cannot be questioned, right? Because things do actually change and adaptation is like an essential function of survival. Respect for the old and interest in the new, I think it's like a very like nice way to look at it. You're my assistant. Just stand there and don't say anything. No problem. That's going to be really difficult for him. Did you see that? Levitation! <laughs> it was a foot off the ground! Is that incredible or what? Is what? Did I miss something? No, I did not. How did you do that? Yeah, yeah. Please give me some of your money. It looked like you were just sitting on a pillow. <gasps> well, why didn't anyone tell me? Now I look like an idiot! I like you, kid. You're a real straight shooter. Just like me. Miss Sato, he's with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Julie, do the thing. Julie. You're gonna love this.
Incredible. Mind blowing, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, forget that. That's the past. Oh. Shut it off, Julie. Right. Look me in the eye. <laughs> we got a deal. <laughs> Is that how business usually goes? Having worked on Wall Street, I can say. Yes, sometimes. When this festival was founded, the tribal elders would commune with the spirits. I've never seen that. And that is a shame. That is why I want so badly to teach you, to help you fulfill your destiny. I thought I had made it clear that Tenzin is teaching her. Every avatar before you traveled the world to learn. Look at the twins in the background. Pretty intense over there. Because of how hard he's pushing, I'm thinking he has something else to gain beyond just helping the avatar. He may actually want to help, but I think people who really have help have like concern and compassion as their priority. They understand it's a two-way street. So it's like, when you're ready, I'll help you. Like if you want help, I'm happy to help you, but it's not like a, a drive, you know? Looks like someone's trying to take your place as the avatar stick in the mud mentor. Boomy, don't pick on Tenzin. You know, he's always been sensitive. I'm not sensitive. <laughs> what was that about that little look from katara i think travel is a great idea for the show actually i think it works out pretty well that season one of Korra was a departure from that travel thing now i think it would feel refreshing to go back to that model you know because traveling the world is something that's always at least for me it, it it's so satisfying i fear the time is fast approaching when the north can no longer stand idly by while our southern brothers slip into total spiritual decay i only hope we are not too late to change course. Now, let's have some fun with Wacky Wushu's Dancing Otter Penguins! The timing of that. <laughs> when is Bolin gonna get some love? Come on. He's a great guy. He deserves a good girl. Which one is the guy? I feel like this, this is important to know. Make him a move. Should probably figure out which one's which. Good luck. Yeah, two have he's gonna need it. Me out. They smell like a grandma's attic. Hey, I'm Bolin, my friend of Korra's. You're uh, Eska, right? I am loving these robes. Did they just hiss? <clears throat> you amuse me. I will make you mine. You mean like a boyfriend or, or like a slave? <laughs> yes. Win me prizes. Yes. <laughs> Either way, right? I mean, that went well, right? Tenzin thinks I'm his prisoner. I will never finish training with him in charge. I support whatever decision you make. Oh, thanks. That's a big help. I thought you wanted me to be supportive. What the hell? He can't win. Now you want me to tell you what I think? Make up your mind. Oh. Ouch. I understand Mako's frustration because that is difficult. Like, he really is just trying to help Korra. He's like, I just want you to be happy. There's no helping that situation because she recognizes only she can deal with it, but she doesn't know how to deal with it. She's using him as a scapegoat for her own feelings. I think the best thing to do for Mako is just, like, stay level. Recognize that she's going through something. Just be like a rock, you know? Be Mako always. Don't get frustrated. Just be patient. Wait. Don't take it personally. I think that's the call. Naga, what are you doing? Naga, hush! Spirit world? Quiet, Naga. You'll wake everyone up. She's gonna save everyone from this giant monster that's approaching. Yeah, there it is. What? Oh, what the heck? That's not what I expected at all. That is legit terrifying demon. Korra can't even really fight them, right? She's not gonna, like, just bend them away. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna have limited effect anyway, just because the spirit. I guess Korra's father is a badass bender in his own right. Yeah, I'm gonna power it. Alright, my suspicious side is coming out again. It's a little convenient that this thing shows up right when this guy is here to take care of the situation, especially when he wants to convince Korra to learn the spiritual side. I could teach you everything I know. But Korra still has much to learn about airbending, and I hope that going to the air temples will help her connect with the past avatars. Ugh. Anyone want to ask me what I think? Korra, please, listen. There's something that she doesn't know that they know. I'm sorry, Tenzin. This is as far as we go. It has been a pleasure serving you. Avatar Korra. I 
think you forgot a couple of things. I think it's important that you all visit your father's home together. Come on, it'll be fun. All right, hop on. Yeah, I mean, I'm still down for this vacation, even without Cora. We'll see you soon. Do you think I did the right thing? I don't know. I'm sorry, but I'm not very good at this avatar counseling thing. But I know your heart is in the right place. You'll just have to trust it. Pretty smooth. Now it is time to put it behind you and begin your new training. Well, she's going to learn a lot. I no have great what. plans for you. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right. Wow. Um, that episode was a lot of fun. I'm really interested to see where they're going to go with this, as always. Uh, they're so good at setup, these guys. Lots of new characters. I'm looking forward to seeing how they all come together. So that's it. We hope to see you for... See how did you get over there? Is there something I should know about? Cabbage Bro's gone for one day and this is how you act? Before the video ends, I have to say a huge thank you to everybody who signed up for Patreon yesterday. I'm blown away by the amount of support that I got. I honestly, it's incredible. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you watch at least the intro of the extended version of this video that's up on Patreon now. There's a special message in there. But I do want to do shout outs. I want to shout out all the people who joined the, the, what did I call it? The Fruit Wealth, the Goodwin Fruit Wealth Conglomerate. What am I going to do when I don't have fruits anymore? Am I going to have to change it? Don't look at me like that. Special thanks to everybody who joined the amazing and immortal Goodwin Wealth Fruit Conglomerate. The best fruit conglomerate that there is. I said I would shout you out if you signed up. I was expecting to read a few names every now and then. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people who joined this. So I'm going to I'm gonna read all your names and then from now on, your names will appear at the end of videos. Aaron Javaria, Baron Salt, Ben Barringer, Bicycle Aces Up, Brimmy, Caleb Kadena, Chris, Christy Cameron, Christopher Person, Cody Taylor, Cody Zoom, Daniel Bazan, Daniel Levitt, Diaprecia, Elijah Lincoln, Jaja Binks, Jackie Lamb, James Carswell, Joseph Hallowell, Justin Calavecchia, Lana Cronenfeld, Manuel Alves, Nagzari Razmadza, Official J. Rem, Patrick R.L., Rachel, Shane, Victor Daniel Pacheco, Virginia Harp, Zavulu, Austin Graves, Nick Dinosaur, Omar, and Yu Yaha. To all my patrons and to everyone who continues to support the channel day in and day out, Thank you so much, and I'll see you for Season 2, Episode 2.